As always, we are happy to have you along, and we are joined, as always, by Greg Angert, beer director for the ever-growing Neighborhood Restaurant Group, also a food and wine sommelier of the year. The group includes Red Apron, three locations, Union Market, down in Penn Quarter, right next door to the Partisan, and also in Merrifield, Virginia, where uh, something new is coming uh, from you guys right next door. Yeah, we're doing... Uh we took this little space right next door. It's going to be called B-Side. It's connected to Red Apron, kind of in the same way that the Partisan is, though it's not as uh, high and fine dining. It's more of really a bar with uh, comfort food by our chef, Nate Anda. Uh, should be opening uh, any day now. Um, you know, obviously it's going to have a great beer list. So we got, I think, 12 drafts and over 150 bottles and cans out there. So Good news for you folks who fun. live yeah. near the soon-to-be-open uh, B-Side. Greg, it is always good to see you. you. too. What is on tap this week? So this week I have a, a somewhat new release from our friends down in Athens, Georgia at Terrapin Brewing Company. Uh, you know, it's called Liquid Bliss. It's part of their side project uh, series, number 18 here. They like to make these kind of one-off, fun, exotic uh, beers on the side. You know, we collaborated with Spike Bukowski, who's the, one of the owners and the brewmaster at Blue Jacket and a while back and uh, the beer that we made together is called Bread of World Peach. It's a peach IPA with Britannomyces. That should be coming out very soon. So unsurprisingly, you know, Terrapin is known for making a lot of rye based beers, a lot of hoppy beers, but they also like to play around with interesting adjuncts, whether it's fruit, chocolate, or even peanut butter in this case. So uh -huh. Liquid oh. Bliss is a uh, uh, basically a, a kind of a, a peanut butter porter, 6.7%. It's brewed with peanut butter, with uh, cocoa nibs uh, that are roasted in, in the states in Nashville, Tennessee. And then it's even finished after fermentation uh, with even more uh, peanuts. They get uh, local uh, Georgian peanuts that are green, so they're still moist from, oh, okay. from being picked. And uh, they, they boil them at the brew house and then add them into the beer. So. So. You would think in Georgia you'd have to make a beer. Yeah, peanut butter. Yeah, yeah exactly. So they have here. It's tasty. Ooh. It smells like a Reese's peanut it butter smells, cup, doesn't it? It smells good. Mm. And not super heavy or intense. It's only about 6.7% 6, 6 alcohol. That's nice. And, and, and it's lighter tasting than you may think looking at Yeah, you think it's going to be color. like this. Yeah, yeah like sludgy. This huge it's not. Sludgy. No, it's yeah, light, so really. It's really. And only 6.7% is really cool, too. And the cool thing is a lot of that peanut butter cocoa nib thing is in the nose on the palate it drinks kind of like a standard porter you know it's so for those of you maybe like uh like i don't like beers that taste like something else or desserty beers it finishes dry it's not too sweet um and, and really it's just a, a delicious porter at its root um we were talking last week about dominion and how they've been around since 1989 there are a lot of great craft breweries that have uh, been around since the 80s across the country but how how long has this been sort of popular to to you know, add peanut butter or, or things like that to beer, things like you mentioned that people might not normally think would Expect be good. Beer, yeah. Because at Snallygaster two weeks ago, my hands down favorite beer was the Green Flash beer made with mango and some sort of chilies. Yeah, it's and, I think it was habaneros yeah. and mangoes in their West Coast IPA base, yeah. And I went back four or five times. <laughs> I loved it. You and really you know, probably it. would have turned my nose up at something like that. Um, had I not, not tried a lot yeah, of them with you, so how, that's, that's been, it hasn't been long, this trend. No, I think, well, it's, in, it's a great question. The, uh, so, like, Terrapin, for instance, question. been around for 2000, since 2002, but, you know, it's 2014 now, and we have Liquid Bliss. So, I think that certainly we're seeing a preponderance of, of experimentation now that, you know, 10 years ago we thought craft beer was getting crazy, and we, it was nothing compared <laughs> to what it is today. So, we're seeing lots of different things, you know. Uh, Evil Twin does an Imperial Donut Break. It's literally a uh, Imperial Biscotti Break is Imperial Stout that's finished with donuts. Like literally adds donuts into the thing, or so they say. Um, but you know, I think th the fun thing about this is that adding fruits to beers um, goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, if not longer, because it was, you know, any sugar source would, would get your fermentation up. So that's why you see, you know, lactose milk sugar being added to beers for a very long time. You'll see, um, uh, although that was mostly to sweeten and, 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 and round out the beer, but yeah, fruits being added, candy sugars being added to get the alcohol up. Um, we even have uh, evidence of coffee being added to beers back in the, in the 19th century. So there is a historic precedence there, obviously, herbs and spices and things like that, the Gruadale tradition. Um, 
And then you might think that today that we're doing crazy things like peanut butter for the first time, and that's true. Uh, but I like, I think what, what I'm very interested in is the fact that the modern pumpkin ale goes back to the mid '80s. To, speaking of the old school breweries, so like Buffalo Bills out in Hayward, uh, California, um, or Bill Hayward out in, in California, uh, doing a pumpkin beer in the mid '80s was already incorporating pumpkin and spices to make something taste like a dessert, i.e. pumpkin pie. So, you know, peanut butter cups, pumpkin pie, it's been around uh, for some time, though today it's definitely more prevalent. More breweries are, are taking a shot at it and, uh, and, and, and some of the, the things that we're seeing are crazy. Remember, we did that Funky Buddha event at Church Key with our buddies, uh, uh, Ryan and Casey Sense from, from Funky Buddha. I mean, they are masters of making beers taste incredibly redolent of so many things like they have a blueberry cobbler beer you know i mean it's it's really uh, it's it's taken off recently but it's been around for a while so some things might seem obvious but what would you pair this with so you so thinking about this earlier today before we, we sat down i mean you know i didn't want to just be like oh it's just it's a dessert beer or, or pair it with desserts i think anybody could figure that out at home and i think it would work although it's not as sweet so with some chocolate desserts it might get a little bit uh, overwhelmed by the richness of like you know a devil's food cake or something like that um, I like to think of savory ways we can incorporate this, and I immediately started to think of thinking of dishes that incorporate peanuts. So, um, you know, I love satay mm -hmm. skewers, you know, mm -hmm. like the Indonesian skewers, a little bit of peanut uh, sauce there. That would work great with this. You'd be kind of bringing a roasted note to the meat. Uh, in that case, obviously pad thai, classic mm, yeah. uh, Thai dish, I think this would be great with. Again, because it's not too boozy, it's not too sweet, it drinks like a porter. Um, and then also anything that has tahini in it. So you think of like baba ganoush, eggplant dip with uh, that sesame seed tahini sauce, fantastic. Or any kind of beef shawarma that has a tahini sauce over the, uh, over the skewered uh, beef in a pita. I'd like to try this with uh, Mexican mole sauce. Too. Oh yeah. Chicken and mole sauce. Bringing a nuttiness into yeah. it would be fantastic. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.